you you talked earlier about the this the egos involved in the NBA and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, what are the byproducts and Commissioner Stern is largely credited for this but you know one of the mm-hmm. by- byproducts of having a, a a league that is superstar driven it's it's driven you know revenues uh, media ratings mm-hmm. everything is driven by star players and it's very hard for ego not to become involved in that because mm-hmm. you know the 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 more attention you get and and the more points you score the more money you make um and Commissioner Stern came in, I believe, right around you know your last few years in the NBA. Did you get the sense, uh, you know, during that period of time in the '80s when it was about Magic and Larry and you, and then you know later on uh, Michael, that the league was really turning into a a individual, not an individual sport, but a, but really the emphasis was on the star player and not on the team. I don't think it ever shifted totally away. Uh, from the from the team, because basketball is a team sport, and you know there are <clears throat> you know there are great players uh, who are not champions, and they're stars. Um, you know they always use the Barkley example and Carl Malone and Patrick Ewing and so on and so forth, whatever. And you know these guys were superstars, um, didn't win the title because. As Bill Walton told me once, well, you guys had the best player, but we had the best team. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> that year. <laughs> so uh, with it being a, a team sport, um, I think you know, the fact that now you need three guys, maybe you need four guys, you know, who have elevated status, who are considered to be uh, a cut above uh, the rest in order to secure that title and the way that players uh, move around, you know, there's, there's a, um, the juggling act in, in terms of, you know, players recruiting their friends or, you know, su- super talented players to, to come and play for them. So it seems like the bottom run teams are never getting the chance to catch up. You know, the draft, the draft isn't enough to, uh, to balance that out. So, you kind of see the same majority of the teams in the playoffs. If there's 16 teams in the playoffs, the majority of them are going to be teams that were in the playoffs the year before and probably the five years before. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, stars in all sports. I mean, if, if you're, if you're, if you're an elite athlete and you're rewarded as such, or whatever that just makes you a bigger star because I, I I get a little confused sometimes when all players are called legends and all former players are called legends because there's some people you know who just you know had a cup of coffee in the league <laughs> whatever so how's that guy become a legend <laughs> he just stopped in for a cup of coffee and then he was gone. So, uh, so the standards, the standards have changed, and um, and because there's so many, hundred percent, you know, who have legend status. Now, if you're above that status in reality, based on your statistics, your performance, and your ability to be on championship teams and be the glue, be the man, and so on and so forth, then you deserve the the, the elevated status. You deserve the, the lofty, the lofty status. But I personally, I mean, I always, and I free to lecture people and say, you're, you're, better, you're better off as a person in life if you're success driven and not ego driven. You know, the ego driven person will at some time get his ego bruised. And the only thing that could uh, stop a success driven person is to not be successful. And you know, as far as winning or losing is concerned, somebody's got to win, somebody's not going to win. And so the term loss and losing, loser, whatever, they, they've they been erased from my vocabulary because, you know, you either succeed at something or you don't succeed at it. And just keep on pushing because being success driven is a good place to be. It's a good way to be. And, and being successful, obviously, is a good place to be. 
I think I think your your status of being alleged is warranted. You would agree with me on that, right? <laughs> I, I think I, I think I called you a legend at the beginning of this, and I I don't think I'm I don't think I'm off base on that. <laughs> There's a lot of company there. There's, there's too much company. <laughs> Who was who? Who was the who was the best player you ever played against? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's uh, he was always in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that if I were going to start a franchise, and he's the guy I would start with. I probably would pick him as an ideal teammate. And and you know Moses used to eat him up. <laughs> he said he, Moses would always say, "Man, you know Kareem never outplayed me." He, you know, one on one, listen, but the game wasn't one on one. And he played 22. They both played 20 some odd years or whatever, but he probably would be the guy if I were going to uh, start my franchise. So I have to acknowledge him as the best player that I played against. Who was the best guy you played against? Oh, that's so far. Uh, I, I, LeBron, LeBron. LeBron. It's yeah. like LeBron and Kevin Durant and then, and then yeah. Kobe. LeBron, like those are the best players, I think, from my, from my era. Good picks.